Hi. I'm sorry, but I can't speak very well. Um, I used to be a firefighter and inhaled toxic gas, the chemical burns, so I can't communicate very well. So bear with me. I've I wear cloaks quite a bit. And uh, while buying cloak pins, I've noticed that nobody knows how to use cloak pins properly. So I thought I would make this video. And when I say nobody, I mean not even the companies who produce these things know how to properly use them as they give you wrong directions. Now, this is a cloak pin. And I'll show you. Do you see how easy that was to get apart? What I use Sorry, this is a phone and a camera. What I use for a cloak is simply a a blanket that these small plaid tartan blankets with the tassels at both ends that people often refer to as picnic blankets are not in fact picnic blankets. <laughs> They're cloaks, but coats became really nice and so cloaks fell out of fashion and these became picnic blankets. But I'll show you what they're used and how they're used and why even the tassels are there. Okay, here we go. Uh, sorry about my breathing. This is a cloak pin. Let me get camera angle. Uh, this is a cloak pin. The size of your pin depends on the weight of your fabric. When my daughter wears a light shawl with large holes in it and can be bundled small, she wears a smaller wing. This correlates to how big you want uh, the bundle of your fabric, you'll see in a minute, to equal half uh, this. So, your radius. The reason will become clear. So you grab your fabric, you grab your proper size ring. <laughs> You're not stabbing this through your fabric. <laughs> it's a pin. People, I think, hear the word pin and they lose their minds a little bit and they think, well, I'm going to stab it through. Or they look at this and they've never seen it used. Because who has for a long time? I grew up with them. But, um, nobody's seen these used, so they get awful creative on how to use them. And it always is some sort of pinning. And when at the end result is just like, just get a safety pin because you don't know what you're doing. So, this is how to properly use this. Grab your blanket, or it's more correctly would be called your 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 plaid plaid in Gaelic it refers to refers to a blanket, and this is what they're talking about. So you take take your blanket, you make two. If your hands can touch together, you see like that, just shawl it up, right? You do it the proper amount depending on this. But, so you take this, and you see how it's bent to a side? Sorry. It's bent to one side, see? And that's so, when properly clamped, you don't want it to come and cockeyed down, can't down, because if it sits now, your needle's pointed up away from you. That sucks because you can catch it on your hand or something else. You want it to sit flat across like this. See, so 
make sure you put it on the way that's going to help you with that. And that is this way. So you put it to where your point is hanging to the outside. Okay. I'll get this back. You get better and better at this as you go. Go and you hang it down in the middle. You lay this across the top. Because across the top you're not. And your pin, okay. Ah, sorry. Your pin goes under. See how I'm sandwiching? I'm sandwiching all of this. And your pin, let's turn this on the camera. Your pin passes through the gap. And when it passes through the gap, you hook. Hook and spin. Now, that's that's it, actually. That's I mean, there's no real adjusting. You can adjust the prettiness and make it pretty if you like. Um, if your fabric is the proper... If, the, if this gap is a little bit big, it should only be big enough to pass the pin. Honestly. But... Um, if your fabric is too small, it'll fall out the gap. So you want to use a proper size fabric per ring. You understand? That's actually quite important. This gap is even a little too big. But now you're left with the cloak. With the proper bunching here. So now, you can pull a hood over... And when it sits, when it sits to your back, I'll stand a little farther back for you. When it sits to your back, sits properly. This isn't pulling up on you or anything. It's proper size pin, so it hangs down and nice. You know, put it half over a shoulder if you like, all over the shoulder, up that shoulder, this. And you know when you've done it correct, take it off. You can hang it up. Take this, you see. You can just put it right back on. No big deal. It's right there. Very strong. You don't need to pierce your fabric. All you're doing this is not this is not cheap stuff. And the people who use this culturally and commonly more than, I mean, I'm the only one who uses them that I know, but why would you pierce your fabric? First off, you're not going to get it correctly done. It's going to overlap and then you're going to have it pulling and yanking and it's going to tear the fabric. It's going to rip it. You think a cotter a hundred years, 200 years ago would have been voluntarily ripping his fabric by putting holes in it <laughs> out of your mind out of your mind so there's no reason to do that just bind it it's it's more these are more appropriately a clamp you just have to be shown how to use it there's no reason to be creative all right well so that's how to make a cloak oh i told you what the tassels are for i told you i would tell you well everyone with a beard mustache knows that when you get into sub-zero you blow t below zero Celsius temperatures, Fahrenheit 32, then you start to get condensation problems and this turns into a, a wet, nasty, na nasty mess and it'll freeze up eventually. Well, what you're doing with this, the tassels, the tassels hold in heat and create a, push the vapor barrier out farther. So that's what those are for on that end. Much like the fur lining around a, a modern polar coat pushes that vapor barrier out so your mouth doesn't freeze so much tassels being on the other end for two reasons one of them so the whole thing is reversible and number two so <sighs> number two it acts as a acts like flaps on a wing so, so when they start to get out they they flutter they flutter and they drop the fabric down because you don't want you're not a superman and you don't want your cape flying back behind you. Well, it's not a cape. Capes don't have hoods. It's a, it's a cloak. But anyway, so it falls behind you. So anyway, sorry about the camera angle. I'm the one bending over, not you. And I hope that you 
learned how to do this properly. It should look just like that. Back side of it. Just like that. You can see the pin going all the way across. And it's a lot stronger than pinning it through your fabric. Stop doing that, people.